I do, because if what you're saying is is that John Calvin quoted the Church Fathers, which I, I grant you, yes, he did. And it wasn't just John Calvin. You had uh, Luther, Zwingli, many of the reformers, um, John Knox, for example, many of the reformers would have quoted the early church. I, I grant that, absolutely. But what you're saying is, you're saying that there is, um, there's no real issue with them doing this. I say there is an issue because they're quoting them as if they agree with them. But what they're doing is they are coming to very different conclusions to the early church fathers, the ones they quote. For example, um, can you can you do, do you know any of the ones that John Calvin, off the top of your head, quoted from? Well, he quoted Augustine a lot. Exa Augustine, exactly. This is this is what I'm getting at. So that's that's exactly my point. He quotes from Augustine. Now, Augustine was not some kind of proto-Calvinist reformer. Augustine would have held to doctrines that you would believe would be heresy. So how can you say right, that John, Cal likewise, John Calvin? How, fully respectfully, how, likewise, on, you how, too. how can you say that John Calvin consistently quotes Augustine, okay, uh, in a consistent manner when Augustine, to John Calvin, if he's going to be consistent, would be considered a heretic? Augustine believed in Eucharistic adoration. He believed in the papacy. He believed in baptismal regeneration. He believed in the necessity of uh, keeping tradition. He believed in all of this. He believed in intercession of the saints, the real presence of the Eucharist. Many of these things, right. Calvin, as well as especially Luther, would consider heretical and false. Hence the Reformation. Well, actually, Luther believed in baptismal regeneration and many things that August, Augustine taught. And, and I, I would just like to say, I, I don't see any, any dilemma because uh, there are, are a lot of things that Augustine taught that you would find very much heretical. So, I mean, if you want such to use as, this logic, I, I, I can, oh, a lot of things. He explicitly as. taught on, on double predestination. He, he taught that unbaptized babies go to hell. He taught, you know, he, Augustine was the, the father of what we know as predestination as we know it today, right? The, the, the bondage uh, of the will is what Luther heavily was influenced by Augustine. But that's the point. Um, you know, that's, that's the point. Even though, yeah, you're right. Augustine does have a, I would say, an off view in terms of predestination, but that doesn't mean we discount. Right. Him. It doesn't mean we discount him as a church father. In the same way, modern day Catholics today can still hold to Catholic theology, but they can, in fact, um, be wrong on an aspect of you know cert certain teachings. That that's fine. That, so, that one second. So you're that, saying that, I can use the same logic you know, what, against you? No, no. What I'm saying is that doesn't pose a problem for me. I can say individual church fathers can be uh, orthodox in their teaching in the in the fundamentals, but they can be off on like a secondary issue such as uh, predestination. I don't see how that argument holds water. But the difference is, I wouldn't condemn him as a heretic for holding that particular view. We don't do that. We don't, in fact, predestination is a is a hard topic that people can disagree on within the Catholic Church. In your perspective, those things I referenced that he does hold, you would have to, by necessity, call him a heretic. For example, no, I, I would not. Okay, so do you, do you believe Eucharistic adoration is a heresy, is idolatry? Well, define what you mean by you know heresy, because I mean there's a lot of different interpretations of it. I I, I think it's false. I wouldn't necessarily call it heretical because you know i i just wouldn't go as far as to say that well okay so if you are you a reformed baptist or a presbyterian i am dutch reformed okay so I was under the category of presbyterian yes yeah. okay okay so if someone in your church was adoring the eucharist okay would they be um, reprimanded for that or would that be allowed that would not be allowed would it no of course not. exactly so it's a wrong teaching yes and yeah, it, it is a wrong teaching, but I wouldn't condemn them as a heretic. You wouldn't condemn... Okay, so if the bread and wine is not really the body, blood, you know, etc., etc., of Christ, okay, if it's not really this, right. then to adore this would be to be adoring someone, giving something adoration that is not God. That would be considered idolatry. Would you agree? Uh, in some way, yeah. Okay, thank you. So if this is idolatry, idolatry, would you admit... admit is a damnable, a damnable heresy, considering what we read in the Old Testament. Well, I'm I'm sure you wouldn't call it idolatry, would you? No, no, what, no. I'm speaking from your paradigm. So, from your perspective, okay, would you agree? We both agree. Idolatry in the Old Testament is condemned as a damnable heresy. Okay, right. If if if, for example, Augustine is adoring something that is not actually Christ, and it's just simply bread and wine. Would you agree that is a damnable heresy based upon the Old Testament teaching? To be consistent, you would have to say yes. Well, yeah. Again, I just said it's a it's a false doctrine. Okay. But I, I don't believe I don't believe Augustine was you know in and of himself a heretic. 
although there is many inconsistencies in his teachings but i don't can i don't i wouldn't consider him a heretic so would you not say okay if okay so would you say that the israelites adoring the golden calf they are adoring something that is not god therefore they were severely punished and actually in danger of hellfire would you agree of course okay so the same thing applies here if augustine okay is adoring something that is not god okay he is you know let's say worshipping the bread and wine as you say yeah um if that's the case he's adoring something that's not god he's giving adoration to that which is not god therefore that's heresy and just like the israelites and the golden calf they was adoring that okay they were condemned they was in trouble okay in you the, see in, there, in, there's a big difference here no no hold on hold on what i'm saying no no there's no difference because if okay let's put it like this if for example those israelites okay they were adoring the golden calf as we both agree they were doing if they died in that right. state would they go to hell well of course yeah okay thank you so this is what i'm getting at because they would go to hell in that instance okay because there was they died in unrepentant adoration of something that was not god then by consistency if you are going to be consistent you would have to say that if augustine was adoring something okay for his whole entire life unrepenting and died in that state and he was adoring something that was not god you would have to say he's in hell but you won't do that because you're being inconsistent because he agrees with with one aspect of your theology therefore you're trying your best to hold on to augustine when i'm saying augustine certainly was not a calvinist or in any way shape or form a proto-protestant you would have to condemn him as a damnable heretic well again you're you're, you're presupposing due to that analogy that the, that the eucharist is some kind of false god you're comparing the the golden calf with with the eucharist you know i i i i don't condemn that as you know or i don't see that i, I don't i don't see that any anything re relevant but you should right you know augustine wasn't worshiping a golden calf was he no but the problem is okay he was worshiping something that he believed to be the real blood and and, and bread uh, sorry the real bread uh uh, body and blood yes. of Christ. Okay, so what Augustine that, was doing? That wouldn't be idolatry. What? Oh, hold on. But what Augustine is doing? Okay, he is adoring something. Okay, do you believe the bread and wine is literally the real presence of Christ in the Eucharist? Yes or no? Or do you believe it's symbolic? Uh, I wouldn't necessarily adhere to either one of them. Okay, but it, okay, so you wouldn't agree it's the real body, blood, divinity of Christ in the Eucharist? No? Uh, if you're talking about transubstantiation, then yes. no. Okay, so if this is not the real presence presence of Christ in the Eucharist, it's merely bread and wine, okay? In the same way, if that golden calf is not really divine, it's simply a golden calf. So when they adore the golden calf, they are damned as heretics, according to you. But when Augustine, in, in your paradigm, I'm not saying it's heresy, I'm saying in your paradigm, to be consistent, you would have to say what Augustine is doing here is a similar thing to what the israelites were doing there was giving adoration to something which is not god and not divine in any way shape or form therefore that's worshiping something other than god which is a damnable heresy the commandment says do not take any other gods before me so you would have to say augustine is guilty of that in terms of eucharistic adoration but you won't do that so what i'm well, saying man, I, is, I, see, is I, being, I find it very it, no you're being inconsistent and what you're doing is all due respect buddy is when you say you know you're comparing the eucharist to the golden calf i would never do such a thing in my paradigm well i mean you're doing no, such no, no, a no, thing no, right no, now no, I mean... my, no allow me to finish in my paradigm i would never do such a thing okay i would never say that from my perspective but i'm speaking simply from your perspective because from your perspective those two acts are one and the same. It's adoring something other than God. Whether Augustine believed it to be the real presence or not is irrelevant. Because if you believe it's not, and Augustine did, you would have to say Augustine is committing idolatry. Again, I, I see this very, very big stretch in, in these two comparisons. I, 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 again, just because he, he adores the Eucharist, I, I, again, I would not condemn him as a heretic. I'm not sure how... Um, you know, I find it illogical to, to compare the golden calf with the Eucharist. Again, there, there are certain aspects of the Eucharist that I do agree with. I'm not I'm not saying it's it's an entirely false doctrine. You know, it's it's a doctrine straight from the devil. I'm not saying that, which is why I wouldn't dare to compare it with worshiping a golden calf. Um, you know, aside from the fact that this is like really almost completely irrelevant to what you know what we're, we're talking about about sola scriptura. Okay, so um, so let's maybe let's okay so. I'll explain what I mean, and then we'll just get back into into the topic. So basically what I'm saying is right. is that if you do not condemn Augustine for adoring something that is not God, but you do condemn the Israelites for adoring something that is not God, 
you are being inconsistent based upon your love for Augustine. Which, what I'm saying is, if you was to be consistent, okay, you'd have to condemn the pair of them for doing a similar act. But of course, you're not doing that. So I think maybe I would say that's an inconsistency on your part. Um, maybe we should just leave Augustine and, and, as you say, get back to, uh, let's get back to the Bible. How about that?